Ooh. It's spooky season, and uh, that means we're going to be doing a spooky Will It Bot uh, using these Halloween masks that I picked up really cheap uh, last Halloween, or at the end of last Halloween, I should say. Uh, and before some of you jump into the comments and say, Ben, you've already done a mask Will It Bot. That is very true. Yes, I have done a mask will it bot, but this is different for a couple of reasons. A, that one was a very long time ago, uh, and B, this time we're going to be doing a different technique and a different uh, weapon design. So before we jump into the design and what all of this is going to end up looking like, uh, let's just quickly run over the rules of a will it bot because it has been a little while since we've done these and we probably should have a refresher. Uh, the aim of this is to take a common item and turn it into a combat robot. So it must be a combat robot and it must be a legal combat robot in whatever weight class I like. In this case, we're going to go for an ant weight because this thing is light as a feather. So putting it into a beta weight would be ridiculous. Um, must be a real combat robot. It must meet all of the rules of that. The object itself must come out the other end looking somewhat like the object that goes in. Uh, and we must have an active weapon. So, let's talk about design. So how is this mask design going to be different from this one, which is Disguise, my old version of this mask robot. Now, most of the way that happens is the activation of the weapon. This one, Disguise, would activate by raising up and clamping down over top of the opponent using an arm inside. So everything was rigidly fixed to the mask and all of it got tilted to raise the whole robot. That's because this is quite heavy, so I didn't have much weight to do anything other than that. This guy, on the other hand, is really, really light, uh, which is really good because that means that we can change things up. So rather than clamping with the skull, which doesn't really make much sense thematically, we're instead going to clamp with the teeth. So I want to clamp down with the teeth, and that means that when the weapon is in an inactive form, it raises up like this and floats above the robot, obviously on an arm inside here to do that job, but that's gonna look really, really cool. Now, the actual design itself, uh, is gonna get a little bit wild because I did this design on a live stream. There'll be a link to that uh, down below, or at least the VOD of that down below. Uh, and you guys helped me make some decisions on this, which have made this thing rather wild looking. The first of which is questionable wheel choices. So this is my regular wheel that I would normally put on combat robots, something this type of size, it looks decent. This. However, is the wheel that we decided we were going to do on stream, which is gonna put the whole chassis of the robot up quite high. It's going to look very huge-esque. Uh, but I think that's enough about that. If you wanna see more of the design process and me yelling tooth time a couple of times during a video, go and check out the VOD for the stream. Anyway, I'm gonna start printing some things because there's some very interesting parts about to come off the printer. These colorful curvy parts are the mask support. They click together to form a bigger structure so that I didn't have to print tons of support material and have some of these parts have the layer lines in the wrong locations. They're printed out of ABS so that I can acetone weld them together, which means that the joins in them are as if they were just a printed solid piece, which works out quite nicely and gives a nice strong part. However, once they're all together, uh, well, the color is a little bit obnoxious. We kind of need to paint these guys uh, and get them back to a nice white color that goes with the bone system that we're going for. Cool, so that has been painted up and now looks quite decent. The wheels also got the same treatment. Everything basically just got a coat of spray paint, except the teeth. I, I painted the teeth by hand because I think it looks cooler. Chomp, 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 chomp. Uh, now we have those out of the way, it's time to continue with the hardware put together. So we're going to glue the wedge on to the main chassis just with some super glue using some bolts to hold everything together until the glue sets up. And then we're going to hot glue the skeleton structure inside the mask so that we can actuate it later on. 
Once all of that glue is set up and dry, uh, we're also going to add a finishing touch to the skull with some 50 millimeter googly eyes because this thing was not looking silly enough already. That is the main sections of the hardware done. Uh, so it is time to look at electronics and we're going to start with some N20s for drive which is pretty standard and I'm also going to throw my conventional RC uh, Arduino gear in here with a 180 milliamp hour 2S battery to power the whole thing. Oh and also a uh, Metal Gear servo. This is probably a little bit heavy but I think we'll be okay. So, with those electronics, we are going to start by mounting the motors up by clamping them into one of these C-clamps and using two screws per motor to clamp that into the robot. Next up, we are going to screw in the servo itself, which just needs to sit in place and have a screw attaching it through the top. I seem to have messed up the placement of this in the CAD, so this is probably going to stay here for just for now, but I'll have to reprint some stuff later because I need to move this back just a little bit. And next, we add the wiring. So all we need to do here is plug everything in and then just pack and jam our way until all of this stuff actually sits in place, which can take a little bit of time. Once all of that is in place and packed down quite nicely, we can add the wheels and then, of course, we pull in the mask and attach that as well. And it's done and it looks amazing. I am so, so happy with how this thing has come out. Uh, I might end up redoing the chassis because the actual mount for the servo is just a little bit off to one side, uh, which means that the mask is a little bit off to one side, which isn't a huge deal because it's massive. Um, but yeah, it, it doesn't quite fit. Also, all of the electronics don't quite fit, which is why at the moment the mask isn't doing its job. This bit here should be touching the ground, but the arm can't rotate far enough backwards because there's a battery and circuit boards and yada 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 in the way. Uh, so I'll either reprint this or I'll uh, change the circuits that's in there over to something a lot smaller and easier to use. Uh, but none of that matters right now. I decided to go back to me on camera because this is going to be hilarious and I just kind of wanted to do this together with you guys. So let's power up. All right, I think I, I think I have control. <laughs> oh no, the wheeling is mad. Whoop. Because it's so quick. But the mask has taken that pretty well, actually. It's so fast though. These N20s with these massive wheels, it is so, so fast. Okay. Oh my god, and it eats! <laughs> oh, and that's the other thing too, is that the uh, the servo arm can actually go way further down than it needs to. I'm only at like half stick when it hits the ground. Um, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> so I can actually go a lot further. I can lift myself up almost. The only thing is it actually hits at the moment. It's looking like this section here hits this section down here, and that's what's stopping it from going any further. All right, with the mask down, do we just, yeah, yeah, we just straight wheelie. <laughs> Does a full wheelie until it hits the, an the anti-roll bar. Oh no, that's hilarious. Can we get the eyes to twitch? Oh, <laughs> could be careful about that. Oh, dude, this thing is hilarious. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> All right, let's get some better footage of this, some closer footage of this.
All right, and the final critical step here, the weigh-in. Let's take a look. Oh, 160 grams. Ouch. <laughs> Um, yeah, okay, so I'll definitely have to put new electronics in this because if I change this over to running on conventional RC gear rather than my Arduino stuff, I can probably lose that 10 grams. I mean, I could also maybe pull the googly eyes off, but I think that's a bit of a sacrifice I'm unwilling to make at this point in time. Uh, so I need to find 10 grams in here somewhere. Like I said, it will probably come out of the Arduino setup. Uh, it might also come out of the wedge too. There's a lot of plastic in here that I could cut pieces out of uh, to make that all work. I actually could, I could also pull those two screws out too now that the glue is dry. That's probably not gonna save us 10 grams, but it will save us something, that's for sure. Maybe a couple of grams, and then that way we can find a couple of grams elsewhere. Let's take a look. Eh, it saved us a gram. It's <laughs> a good start anyway. Uh, damn right. I honestly thought that we were going to be um, underweight here, and we're not. We are overweight. Uh, but that is all I have time for in this video, unfortunately. So. Uh, it's hilarious. It's just slightly overweight. I will I will fix that and I'll probably get this into a competition at some point uh, And I'm not too too worried about that. Like I said, it's just the control system that I have in here uh, Yeah, it makes this thing very overweight uh, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one. I've enjoyed this one quite a lot I've tried something a little bit different with my editing. I hope you guys uh, like that if you did Please leave me a comment down below and let me know anyway Like I said, I hope you guys have enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video